Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 4 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. session at the 2016 Open Simulator Community Conference. As a reminder to our in-world and web audience, you can view the full conference schedule at conference.opensimulator.org and tweet your questions or comments to at OpenSimCC with the hashtag OSCC16. At this time, we are happy to introduce a terrific session called Exploring Conflict Resolution in Virtual Environments. Our speakers today are Evelyn Gossick, Shruti Patel, and Rachel Yumoran. Evelyn will be speaking first. Evelyn Gossett, RN, MNSN, is an assistant clinical professor of nursing at Indiana University, Northwest School of Nursing, Gary, Indiana. Her interests are in online and virtual environments for interprofessional education. Shruti Patel is a research intern in the neonatal, neonatal education and simulation based training, NEST, program at the University of Washington and a pre med student, class of 2019. At the University of California, Los Angeles, where she is an ALD and PES Honor Society member. Dr. Rachel Umoran is an assistant professor of pediatrics at the University of Washington School of Medicine and Seattle Children's Hospital, Seattle, Washington, and the director of immersive learning for the neonatal education and simulation based training NEST program. Her research interests are in enhancing healthcare partnerships and teamwork using virtual simulations. She has published and presented internationally on using virtual environments for health professional education. Welcome all. Let's begin the session. Well, hello everyone. I um this is Evelyn Gossett. I um I'm happy to be here and um offer you a brief uh, introduction to our project which was called Exploring Conflict Resolution in the Virtual Environments. Um, this team, Dr. Umarin, Shruti, and myself, and uh, another, a student from Indiana University Northwest Campus, um, we created um, a, a simulation for senior nursing management students um, to work through how to deal with conflict resolution in a hospital uh, situation, high stress, um, but uh, very important um, uh, venue for providing care to, to um, sick people. Um, thank you, Yvonne. Um, thank this you. is Rachel and I will um, be running a little bit of a back chat here and Shruti will be available to uh, answer or read out any questions that you have, but we would really appreciate it if you keep your questions to the end. Um, and thank you so much, Ruby, for the introduction. So as Elon mentioned, uh, we've been working collaboratively in creating and using virtual environments for education for quite some time. And we're very excited to present to our most recent work on conflict resolution scenarios for nursing students. Former war zones. <laughs> That's great. Um, so, first of all, keeping the war zone theme alive, uh, what feeling do you get when you hear that you have to work on a team? I mean, sometimes that's a great feeling, and sometimes it's not. But today's workplace does rely pretty heavily on teamwork, and being able to manage conflict effectively is essential for team performance. Um, I do believe, and many of you who have had any contact with the healthcare system know that it is particularly true for healthcare teams that are very complex, that conflict is a major problem. You know, healthcare teams have very high skill differentiation. They have high authority differentiation. They have interdependence. Everyone really has to work together, especially when they're taking care of very complex patients, and then they can also have a rotating leadership structure between physicians and nurses and physicians of different specialties. So because of this, human factors are a leading cause of medical error in healthcare, and that does affect everyone. So our objective with this project was to prepare senior nursing students through developing virtual scenarios on conflict resolution, problem solving, decision making, so that they can be the best nurses that they can be when they graduate, which 
um, this is a class that they received right before graduation, which was essential for them as they move on to their next steps. And so we started off through a process of identifying the problem, then developing learning objectives, and the uh, diagram that you see on the slide in front of you is the current six step process to curriculum development. So we use this process to really thoughtfully design and develop this curriculum. And we decided that as an educational strategy, we would use virtual environments. So as we know, and I know I'm preaching to the choir here, uh, learners can use voice, text and gestures in virtual environments and they can interact with each other as well as with non-player characters or NPCs. And they can choose to learn on their own or with others. So it's an extremely flexible option for any kind of role play scenarios and conflicts in particular. While uh, I think one of the concerns we had going into this was that the potential lack of cues from body language and you know being able to actually see the expressions on the faces of the avatars might be an issue we found that it was not really that much of a problem. So I'll turn it over to Professor Gossett here to talk about the design. Um, this slide uh, tells you about our design for the conflict resolution learning activity, um, which what we are work to keep in a very simple uh, format. Uh, and it just involved a nursing management office and the use of several off-site um, locations that we had have been working with in OpenSim previously. Uh, we wanted to keep the environment to um, focused and targeted for very naive OpenSim users. Next. So this slide shows you um, a how simple the environment was. Uh, the left side of the slide is showing you an example of nursing students in the learning activity. And um, the right side is showing you um, the um, simplicity of the environment. On this slide, you see the students on the left side as they come into the uh, learning uh, environment in OpenSim, and these they're, they're reading their instructions here. On the right side is a simulated uh, uh, Africa traveler type hospital with, uh, and, and the, the scenario for the learning activity continues there. Next. And finally, to create this learning activity, we broke it up into like five phases. The first phase was we call the pre-semester phase. And this part was focused on strictly the development of the curriculum and identification of the learning objectives. Uh, we wrote the scenarios, discussed them in terms of what did we want the students to um, what, what did we want the students to know? Which which role did we want to give information to about the scenario? And the next part was when the course actually began, as the semester began, you'll see on the left side of this screen, it says in class introduction to the open sim. I meet with the students in the classroom and teach them uh, technical setup of um, imprudence. We use imprudence in the classroom and uh, introduction, uh, basic introduction to the virtual worlds and simple orientation to being an avatar and um, walking, talking, using sound and just a general acclimation to the open sim environment. And as the semester goes on, we turn it into a, what we call a flipped classroom. And in the flipped classroom phase, we're using um, our, can our university's uh, learning management system, which is Canvas. And we also use Zoom video conferencing uh, and, of course, the OpenSim virtual world environment. So 
it's quite a challenge for the students to incorporate all these different things, switching between the learning management system, the video conferencing, and uh, the virtual world. But um, we've become sort of expert at um, managing to get the students um, situated with all of that. The virtual activities are scheduled uh, on regular class times, and so that flipped classroom portion is during their regular classroom uh, scheduled time. But these students also have a clinical experience at a local hospital, and so we incorporate their um, learning activities there to what we're doing in the virtual world. And finally, in the flipped classroom, we also use, in the virtual world, uh, we use debriefings following our simulations. And the orange section here uh, is in-class discussions, which we, we have uh, regarding their total experience as an avatar and in the virtual world learning environment. And we use Zoom to do that. And the final part, portion of our phase is the post-semester phase where we get the students' comments and, and uh, concerns about uh, their entire experience through the semester. So, and uh, we do believe, and again, we've learned a number of lessons as uh, Professor Gossett alluded to around working with students, um, both through the development phase and to implementation. And we believe that the pilot of this curriculum was successful because from the standpoint of the virtual space, we kept it very simple. We did simple scenarios about common staffing issues, and that was all that was needed to achieve the objective generating discussion and problem solving. Um, the other thing that we did was we tried to link it to existing work. So we found ways of applying existing builds to the new curriculum. We didn't want to reinvent the wheel each time we did this course. And lastly, we were able to get the learner's perspective. And Shruti, is, we're delight, delighted that Shruti was here um, to be part of this presentation because she helped greatly during that initial phase of development, and we were glad to have her input. Now, during implementation, um, we, again, as Professor Gossett alluded to, had a student who was actually experienced in simulation and able to assist the class as a teaching assistant. And he was able to organize them to get them in world between classes. And he actually stepped in as uh, one of the roles when we needed to, if uh, one student wasn't able to make it out of a group of three or so. Um, David Letson is his name, and I uh, want to call him out for the great work that he did. Unfortunately, he can't be here today. Um, we also found that skilled facilitator debriefing, especially since we're dealing with uh, conflict, which is a topic that's you know, charged and could potentially have um, a lot of uh, impact on both um, the individual's perceptions as well as the behaviors uh, was very important right after the scenario as well as in class. And um, we also used the learning management system for questions and group discussion between classes. So our next steps really quickly are to assess conflict management skills at the individual, team, and organizational level. And in conclusion, I'd like to say that a structured approach, um, as we've been very briefly trying to describe here, which, which embedded virtual simulations on conflict resolution as a senior nursing class practicum into a nursing curriculum um, is a potential way in which we can teach very sensitive subjects, but very important subjects using virtual environments. And I'd like to invite you all to learn more at our booth uh, which is booth 20 on OSCC Expo 3, and I'd like to open this forum for questions. Thank you. Thank you, Evelyn, Shruti, and Rachel for a terrific presentation. As a reminder to our audience, you can see what's coming up on the conference schedule at conference.opensimulator.org. Following this session, we will resume at 4.30 p.m. in this same keynote region with a panel presentation entitled Oculus and Music Technology. 
Also, we encourage you to visit the OSC, OSCC 16 Poster Expo in the OSCC Expo 3 region to find accompanying information on presentations and explore the hypergrid tour resources in OSCC Expo 2 region along with sponsor and crowdfunder booths located throughout all of the OSCC Expo regions. Thank you again to our speakers and the audience and if you have any questions we have a couple of minutes for that. Okay, thank you. We have one question. Do you find that NPCs are as good as humans in role play? Um, so we've used both NPCs and uh, humans in role play, and for this particular topic, we decided to go with humans um, and had the students in their own roles as either the nurse manager or the charge nurse or a staff nurse. And we found that to be successful. I think as we learn more about the subject and more about um, how the dialogue flows, we could certainly trial an MPC in that role. And I think it would be a reasonable option. But since we're very early in this process, we decided to go with human roles. Um, I would like to make another comment about that. My students uh, in the face-to-face -face environment following this activity um, expressed to me how they really enjoyed going in more than once. So at some time they were, they were all required to be the nurse manager, but if they went in another time with their classmates, they would take uh, the charge nurse role and then they would go in as the staff nurse. And so they were able to act out whatever they wanted to, um, to, to make the situation. And um, at the end, they really verbalized to me greatly how they really enjoyed um, going back in, doing it, and being in a different role. So, but I would like to try the NPC, but the role play is m much more exciting. Um, Yvonne, would you also speak to one of the questions here about uh, whether the learning curve using OpenSim took a lot of time away from the actual training? Um, I feel that some uh, students are fine on day one, but that's probably about maybe a quarter of the class. And then a few will have issues that are technical related to their devices and maybe another quarter of the class tend to take a little longer. Do you feel like that's about right? That is exactly right. Um, we, Dr. Umarin and I have been doing this for five years and each semester I have um, the maximum amount of nursing students I can have in one of these groups is 10. That's by state regulation for nurse training. And when I have 10, I maybe have two who are able to become avatars and deal with all the technology uh, within one or two weeks. I always seem to have one or two who by week six or seven still don't get it, but I have them come to my office on campus and I will work with them individually and show them how to do things uh, in outside of the classroom. And that, so I have to hold, I have to hold their hands a lot and um, not allow them to become frustrated um, I encourage them and tell them it's okay. It's not easy to be an avatar. Okay, I think we need to round this up, but thank you all very much for presenting and, and maybe we could, um, if anyone has any questions, can contact the ladies personally. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much.